Okay, hello good people. Once again, this is Jeffrey Daniel here coming to you from Abuja, Nigeria. Today is February 2nd, 2021, according to the Gregorian calendar. I'm always going to tell you guys that because that's the calendar that we use, the one that we have been, you know, inculcated into using that, but that's what that's where we're at. Um, you know, you guys, I don't like to keep coming in so close together with my videos, but things are just happening at such a rapid pace. I'm just keeping up with everything, okay? So if you guys don't mind, and if you're still here to follow me, you're riding with me, giving me your perspective, as I'm giving you my perspective, helping us comprehend all these things that are going on around us. But today I would like to weigh in on something, okay? And um, this is a very uh, peculiar topic today. What I want to talk about today is Black History Month. Black History Month. I always endeavor to bring you the truth, and the truth has no obligation to be comfortable. It only has an unapologetically honest premise. That's it. The truth only has to be honest. So if what I'm about to disseminate makes anyone uncomfortable, then you have been comfortable for far too long. So, Everybody, welcome to the month of February, everybody. I'm sorry I'm a day late. I'm a day late. Today is the 2nd of February, but better late than never. And I've been mulling over some thoughts of how to present this to you guys. So February, now considered the second month of the year in the present day calendar, the Gregorian calendar. You'll be surprised how the months really lined up. But I won't go into that. That's, a, that's another subject. I want to get to the matter at hand. We now experience a lot of manipulations of names and months by the Romans who took it upon themselves to tinker with the calendar. The Romans borrowed their earlier calendar from the Greeks, which had only 10 months. Did you guys know that? Just 304 days in the year. The Romans ignored the remaining 61 days that fell in the middle of winter. So I guess it was too cold for them to think. <laughs> so the first Roman ruler his name was Romulus, introduced the calendar supposedly around 700 BC. This is according to popular curriculum, okay? So around 700 BC, that's when the first Roman ruler, Romulus, introduced this calendar that they uh, adapted from the Greek. Now, according to tradition, see, it's not officially confirmed, but tradition states that the Roman ruler Numa Pompilius added January and February to the calendar, and that made it 355 days to help their calendar correspond closer to the solar year. Then, in the year 45 BC, before the Common Era, the Julian calendar added extra days to the end of the months to make it a 365-day year. Now, what I've just regurgitated can easily be found in general curriculum as standard history concerning the development of the Gregorian calendar that we all use today, mainly throughout European-dominated societies. Okay? So, I'm giving you guys the basis and the origins of how the calendar that we're using today has evolved according to European influence curriculum okay so here's where it gets good now please keep in mind the ancient egyptians had already created a 13-month calendar thousands of years before the greek and romans which was the very first calendar ever created it corresponded with the solar cycles it was the first accurate calendar as it corresponded to the weather conditions and different seasons of agriculture it was considered a miracle of its time. It was later revised by the Egyptians to the 12-month calendar. According to the Egyptian calendar, September 11th, 911, 2019, marked the 6,261st pharaonic year, commemorating the first international calendar in human history. Wait, let me go back again. Last year. To what, two years ago? It was just 2021, okay? So two years ago, 
in 2019, September 11th, 911, isn't that peculiar? That marked the 6,261st Puranic year. They're talking about 6,261 years that they invented this calendar. And the Pharaonic calendar was calculated in 4,241 BC by the ancient Egyptians and the world's oldest calendar. Do you guys understand what's going on here? According to this calendar that they calculated back in 4,241 BC, it's telling us that today it would be 6,000 261 years, but yet we're in the year 2021. Wow, they omitted all of that history, all of that culture, all of that heritage. They just omitted everything that we were. Just took it out of the box and said, okay, you guys, we're going to start you right here. And here we are in the year 2021. What a mind job. What a mind job. Okay? Let me keep going. Let me keep it rolling. I'm, my gloves are off again today, you guys. My gloves are off today. Okay. The Egyptian calendar was also the first solar-driven calendar, while other nations adapted to the lunar calendar. The Egyptian calendar is the basis for the Greek and Roman-infused Gregorian calendar used today. Now, you all know I bring a bit of academia to the party just to keep you on point and also to help you to understand the fundamental premise of these subjects, okay? So this is why I like to give you guys facts, you know, to keep this stuff irrefutable, to keep it incontrovertible, you know? So here we are in a world led by America in the Western Hemisphere, where they have so graciously taken out the time and their busy schedule to relegate all the achievement made by black people in America to be observed and celebrated in just one month of the year, the month of February. And to add insult to injury, it's the shortest month of the year. So you can see how painful it was for them to set aside a time to commemorate our achievements. They had to relegate it to just one month while all, all the other races their contributions can be learned and celebrated all year round. And they made sure it was the shortest month of the damn year. People can only do to you what you allow them to do. Let me, let me repeat that. People can only do to you what you allow them to do. But wait, it gets better. It gets better, you guys. You all are running around talking about, and, and let me tell you, I like to weigh in on Christians. Not, I do not hate Christians. I do not dislike Christians. I come from a Christian background. I come from a heritage of generations of Christians. Therefore, I have the right to speak out on this religion that brought my people to where we are today, okay? So, so if you are a Christian, you should not take offense at someone bringing you something just because you never heard it or you didn't know about it before. But I have to weigh in on you Christians because this is where I came from before I liberated myself, okay? All right. I still believe in the Creator. I am not an atheist. Don't get, don't get it twisted. Don't get it wrong. Don't get it wrong, okay? So, you Christians are running around talking about, no, the evil pharaohs are wicked people. Egypt was the land of the slaves. When all religions, listen to me, all religions, universities, temples, and government systems of justice was created by the Egyptians and still used by all developed countries in the world today. If I stuttered a little bit, let me say that again in case you guys didn't hear me correctly. All religions, universities, temples, and even government systems of justice, you know, the, the weighing arms of, of the justice, the scale of the justice, all of that stuff was created by the Egyptians and still used by all developed countries in the world today, right under your noses. But you, you don't want to know it. You Christians don't even want to know about it because you're too afraid to research it and learn from your own ancestors. You know? It's not in the Bible. It's evil. Those evil Egyptians, they held a slave. You guys have to understand real history. 
understand real history. And the beautiful thing about it is, it liberates you, it exonerates you. We are the cursed children of Ham. We were born into sin. The original sin, we're still paying for it. It's, what a mind job you guys let them do to you. Please liberate yourselves. Okay, let me go on with the subject. Christians, I had to go in on you. I had to give you guys the truth. And the next step I'm going to take is going to further bring it home to you. Listen to this. Listen to this. Hold on. I'm not going to go too far in it. I don't want to get too far into this thing. But I have to touch on this. It's going to make sense to you guys. It's going to help you guys understand what's going on. What you all call the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C., that white tall structure sitting in the middle of the National Mall, standing 545 feet high, the world's tallest predominantly stone structure as a symbol of American democracy is a replica of an Egyptian obelisk. Now, I told you guys about them renaming everything, the misnomers, you know, the anonyms and the exonyms, all those things. I told you about that, right? Okay, well, obelisk is, Egypt and obelisk is actually what the Romans renamed it, okay? So, but for the sake of argument, there's a huge replica of an Egyptian obelisk standing right there in the National Mall in Washington, D.C., facing the Lincoln Monument and the White House, Capitol Building. If it's so damn evil, why is it there? Hold on, hold on. I have just one last one good one for you people who have been so inculcated into hating your own cultures. Go look in front of St. Peter's Square in Rome and see an actual 4,000-year-old Egyptian obelisk brought to Rome from Egypt in 37 AD. Have you ever wondered why it's standing there 25.5 meters high facing the Basilica where the Pope comes out every Easter, Resurrection Sunday to do his prayers? But it's supposed to be a symbol of the wicked, evil pharaohs. Then what does that tell you about the head location of the Catholic Christian religion? Sitting right there at St. Peter's Square, right in front of the St. Peter's Cathedral and the Basilica and whatever they call it. It's right there in Rome. I don't want to get too far into it, you guys, but I'll just tell you this. They have it standing in the middle of France in Paris at the Concorde. They have one sitting, an uh, oblique, an Egyptian oblique, sitting right there on the Thames River. They call it the Needle of, of uh, Egypt right there that was presented to the Queen of England. All these major cities have these Egyptian obelisks. They have one in New York by the New York Museum off of Central Park. And some of these are Christian-based societies who teach you that the evil pharaohs held the Hebrews for slaves and they wouldn't let them go and this and that and that and this and the evil Egyptians. So why do all of these societies keep an Egyptian obelisk in the center of, of their capitals. Why? They know something that we don't know because they're hiding our real knowledge from us. They're, they're keeping our real knowledge of self, our real spirituality, and they created all these religions, okay? All right. So you guys get time. As I always tell you, don't, you don't have to believe me. You don't have to follow me. Trust me, rather. We get time and just Google Egyptian obelisk around the world. Obelisk. That's O-B-E-L-I-S-K, O-B-E-L-I-S-K, Egyptian obelisk, okay? Now, the original ones have to be all one complete stone, and then they have all the carvings in it. It's not stacked at all. It's one complete stone. That's the original. Now, the one in the Washington Monument, that is too tall, it's too big. So they built that, you know, it's, it's the tallest uh, stone structure in the world, all right? a replica of an Egyptian obelisk. So, how many of my brothers and sisters of color are grinning ear to ear, all ecstatic, as if you're in line for a Popeye's chicken sandwich just because it's Black History Month, ready to do a soft shoe sand dance with a slice of watermelon for your master? 
Black History Month, y'all. It's Black History Month. We got Black History Month, y'all. Ha cha 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 cha. Ha. You know, <laughs> I'm making fun of you guys because you have to laugh to keep from crying sometimes, you know, because it's a damn insult. It's a damn insult. Black History Month is an insult on every black soul that was murdered, persecuted, tortured, abused, raped, enslaved, oppressed, disenfranchised, and rejected. It is an insult on us. Now, I know some of you look forward to Black History Month and you feel it's something for us. But if you continue to observe this bone of consolation that they threw at us, we will always be looked down on as a people who accept far less than what we deserve. Black contributions are woven into the very fabric of American society and the world. Yet we only get a month to observe them because we don't want to properly, they don't want to properly include our people into the general American history books along with the evading fathers of the country. Do the Chinese Americans have a, a month? Do the English have just a month? Do the Jews, Italians, the French, the Germans, the Dutch, do any of them have just a month to, to acknowledge or celebrate their contributions to American society? Why is there a Black History Month? A month. I listed off some of our contributions and inventions in America on the last post. You guys, if I started listing what we have invented, created, and contributed to the American society and the world, it would just take how many posts? The GPS system, the traffic signal, the gas mask, um, my God, the first open heart surgery, successful. Uh, come on, you guys, in the hidden figures, we calculated the trips out into space and back, which started this whole basis of the whole GPS and guiding systems and stuff like that. You guys, it, our contributions to American society, the first IBM supercomputer, the first, I, the internet, the internet. Do any of you guys know that a black man invented the internet? I don't mean the internet like it is today with AOL and Yahoo and Gmail, that. In the military, he created the first computer that can communicate with another computer that can communicate with the next computer, the internet. It was a network, the internet work. Inter interlocking network. It started in the military. Then it later came into the civilian population use with ATM machines and at supermarkets and da 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 da. And then it came into our homes with mail and messages. And we're all using it today. Do you guys know this? And they're giving us a month to observe our contributions. Also, now there's a black music month, too. I think it's the month of June or something. But why are we allowing them to insult us like this? As I said, people can only do to you what you allow them to do, okay? We created gospel music, the blues, jazz, ragtime, Dixieland, rock and roll, soul music, which they call R&B. Soul music, house music, hip hop, rap, Afrobeat. And we still thank God every time they decide to give us a Grammy. We created popular music in America. And they're giving us a month, Black Music Month. Okay. We need to stop all of these cultural insults and the lack of recognition for our contributions to America and the world. Now, I don't want to keep this one too long, you guys. I just have to weigh on this because it's February, the shortest month of the year, and they decide, okay, you guys, we don't want to put the black peoples, the Africans and the 
the African Americans, if you want to call yourselves that or whatever, we don't want to put them in the history book. We don't want to get too much. We just we want to know that they were slaves. Yeah, they were slaves. And we want them to know that we freed them from slavery. Yeah, we freed you guys from slavery. And we want them to know that yeah, you had the civil rights movement where you guys were marching to be treated like a human. You know, you had to fight so you can go to schools, so you can live in certain neighborhoods, so you can get certain jobs. They want us to know all of these things. This is what they want us to know. And they put it in their general curriculum. They put it in the school books, the history books. But they omit all of these things that I'm disseminating to you now. And there's much, much more. This isn't a history class. So at some time, I, I will make it a point to go into some of these things, okay? As I always say, you guys, nothing I say and nothing I stand for is meant to be discriminative to any particular race, any particular people, any particular group of people. I'm only disseminating the truth. And if the truth hurts, if it's too uncomfortable for you, then you've just been comfortable for too long, you guys. The truth has no obligation to be comfortable. It only has to be honest, unapologetically honest. That's all it has to do. And that's all I'm trying to be. That's all I'm endeavoring to be. And if I fail in that, in any way, you guys, bring it to my attention so I can publicly apologize to you for any errors I make. I'm not here to insult anyone. I'm up here to uplift, uplift my people. Why do I have to uplift my people? Because we're not being acknowledged in the very society that we're building, that we're helping to be great. And they just lack the whole, I don't know you guys, you know, I don't know. If we don't do it, no one will do it for us. So here I am, I'm doing it. I love you all dearly. I'm praying for us all. We're dealing with this pandemic. America is dealing with its politics. The world is dealing with these vaccines and wondering what to do, what not to do. I'm not a denier. I would never say COVID-19 isn't real. I'm not saying that. I will say politically and socially it's being grossly exaggerated. And one thing that they keep talking about are the vaccines are coming. Okay, we got the Pfizer vaccine, we got the DIS vaccine, the Moderna vaccine, the da-da-da. Why aren't they also telling you guys to keep your immune system strong and teaching you how to keep it strong? Because that's what's going to help you fight these things, even with the vaccine. Okay? All right? Because you can have a jacked up immune system. Uh, I don't know if the vaccines will even do much good if, if your immune system is already jacked up. So... Keep your immune system strong, too, while you're deciding what to do. If you want to take that vaccine, if that's your choice, that's what you do. You know, you guys have to stand for what you know is right and what you believe in. And right now, it's just so, mu so much mendacious news going around. There's so much mendacity going around. So people don't know what to believe. They don't know what to believe. And, and, and So I hear you. So people like myself are trying to bring you guys the truth, all right? Trying to bring you the truth. All right. Once again, I'm going to implore everyone to make my song, Make Love Great Again, the mantra. Because if we make love great again, we will all be great. We have to spread the love, you guys. All right. So as I always say, spread the love, make love again. Keep safe, everybody. Take care of yourself. If you want to go out there and do your little dance for Black History, it's Black History Month. We got a month, you guys. <laughs> if that's what you guys want to do, what can I say? Me, myself. I will continue to observe us every month of the calendar year that we created. 365 days, 12 months of the year, the four seasons of the year, the hours of the day, the months of the year, the weeks. And then these people later came along and they threw their names on top of everything. You know, the month of July, Julius Caesar, the month of August, Augustus Caesar, you know, September, septre, septre means six in Spanish. Okay, that's six. All right, am, 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 am I wrong there? No, 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 uh, uh, that's seven, that's seven. Okay, septre, that's seven. Okay, oct, oct, octagon, octopus. Does that mean eight? Octagon, octopus, it means eight. Why is October the 10th month of the year? If it's October, which means eight, oct. October. Then when you get to November, Novre in Spanish, Novre means nine.
Then when you get to December, DEC, like a decade, DEC, when I was in, in uh, Gabon and I learned French, D mil means 10,000, D, DEC. D is the 10th month of the year. Clearly, D for December is 10. Novre for November is 9. Oct for October is 8th. Septre for September is 7th. Therefore, January is the 11th and February is the 12th. March is the first month of the year, you guys, before they manipulated everything. That's why the Chinese calendar is towards the end of February, getting closer to March. You guys got a lot to learn, you got a lot to catch up with. The Bible's fine, the Quran is beautiful, but sometimes you guys got to, you know, look at real history as well. That's where you're going to find it, okay? All right? I'm not knocking uh, the, the religions. I'm not uh, uh, trying to uh, offend the religions or anything like that, but I'm just saying this real history is real history, empirical history, incontrovertible history, irrefutable history, okay? All right, you guys. I love you. Take care. Make love great again. Let me hear you say it. Make love great again. I love it when you say it. Bye-bye.